Okay, so um, this is the second video about, uh, it's the follow-up to the translation video. Um, and so I'm just picking up, talking a little bit about mRNA and how it gets its message. And so, um, again, this refers to 3.5. Um, I'm just working backwards here. Um, so we talked about translation and making proteins. Trans and so now we need to talk about the next process, how mRNA gets its message. And it's through this process that we we call transcription. So transcription is this process of um, of converting the message, or let's say code, from a gene. I'm going to put gene in all because this is a, a vocab term that you need to be able to define in terms of what IB wants you to know for it. Converting the message from a gene, um, this means it's in DNA, it's a DNA sequence, um, into an mRNA sequence. And there are a couple reasons why, that, why we think that has to happen, we'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, and so really what you need to know is that the message is stored in the DNA or the gene and it gets converted to mRNA. And this is where that other video picks up. This mRNA sequence is being read by the ribosome in translation to put the amino acid sequence in order for the protein to function, okay? So that's, that's the end of the story. Now we're gonna talk about where the start of the story is, how mRNA is carrying the message. So what message is it carrying? Well, the message is the, um, the set of instructions for the protein assembly. It's carrying, it's carrying the instructions to sequence amino acids properly. And by properly, what I mean is, um, in a way, that allows the protein to fold to carry out its function. So when we talk about protein function, let me just point out that what we're actually talking about are several different things. So proteins could be structural. We have several structural pro proteins, just to name a few we've got collagen in our skin, we've got keratin in our fingernails and our hair. Um, so there are some structural ones, there are also some that are involved in transport, like hemoglobin, which is in our red blood cells. That hemoglobin has a property that's going to bind oxygen and carbon dioxide and move them around our body. Um, we've got, um, we've got, you know, actin and myosin, myosin which is in our, pro, in our muscles that we think of. Usually when we think of proteins, you think of your muscles. These are the proteins that allow you to move. Um, we've got enzymes um, that speed up reactions. These are different kinds of proteins. So uh, I just wanted to point out that when we talk about function, they could be lots of different functions. But that, that's very much dependent on the sequence of amino acids. And the sequence of amino acids, just as a reminder, is what we call primary structure, that's one with a uh, degree sign, that's an abbreviation for primary, so this is primary structure. Um, well, again, just as a reminder that in class we're going to add some more complexity to this and talk about tertiary and um, tertiary structure, at least for now, and come back later to talk about quaternary stru structure. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about how this sequence um, gets um, made because let me just point out that transcription is a process just like translation it's a process it's not a thing um, it's a process so let's let's start talking about that process so um, I guess I should point out the DNA we're talking about converting message from DNA to RNA so um, I guess I'm going to draw a diagram that's similar to the one in your book. Um, I guess that's too much. That's way too much space. All 
All right, so. Um, I apologize. Give me one second. I'm going to erase this very quickly so you can. So, because we haven't talked about DNA quite yet, um, although you sh should know a couple of things about DNA already. But um, let's say we'll come back and talk in the future what these lines actually mean. But um, what we have on our DNA sequence is um, Nucleotides. Our, our DNA and our RNA, for that matter, are made out of nucleotides, although we specify them as DNA nucleotides or RNA nucleotides. And this DNA um, let's, has A's, T's, C's, and G's. So I'm just going to put a random sequence down here on, the on, on one side. All right, so I've got my random sequence, and um, I'm just foreshadowing, but you need to know base pair rules. And for DNA, A's bond to T's and C's bond to G's across the two, um, two sequences, the two strands. So A bonds to T, C bonds to G, C to G, G to C, T to A, A to T, T to A, G to C, A to T, T to A, T to A, A to, oops, A to... T and C to G. And so now we've got our double-stranded DNA sequence. But what ends up happening is um, the DNA opens up. And what, what actually comes in is an enzyme that, this is a protein that was already made, that's floating around, that we call helicase. A helicase is an enzyme that will unzip the DNA sequence. Now helicase is going to be moving in this direction in this model. Um, and so what it actually would have done is already unzipped this section. So hang tight and I'll do that real quick. Okay, so um, that so this is what happened. The helicase came through. It's moving from left to right in this model. What that means is that there's going to be a bubble here, um, a transcription bubble behind the helicase. Um, and what's happening in, what is also happening here um, is that we're going to have another, let's, let's pick, I guess, orange. Um, we're going to have another molecule that we call, let's call this RNA polymerase and just as a key you should be able to know that this is an enzyme because of the ASC ending and it what it does is it makes the RNA polymer polymer so um, this RNA polymer is made it's a code to this DNA so just as a quick note DNA is double stranded RNA is single stranded it only uses one of the two sides to make the mRNA sequence and the way it does that is this RNA polymerase, which is also moving from left to right, um, actually starts over here, and it pair it does base pairing just like we did with the A's, T's, C's, and G's, except for RNA we don't have any T's, we have U's instead, and we'll come back to that in just a second. So G instead of oops, this we got a lone C in here. Um, G instead of bonding to uh, it, it will also bond to a C. T will bond to an A, A will bond to a U because there's no T's in, actually let me do this in a, the same color we do in the, the other video. We've got C, A, U, T bonds to A, G bonds to C, A to U, and T to A. And we've got this line that goes behind it that we'll talk about in just a few minutes. Um, and as the helicase continues down, the RNA polymerase is going to follow and it's going to continuously bring in RNA nucleotides to add to this RNA sequence um, to make this RNA sequence longer. 
and then when this this whole, the whole process is done, this mRNA, that's what this is. Um, oh, and I didn't label this, but I hope you got the the green is DNA. Um, but the mRNA sequence, once it's all done, will be kicked out and will leave. Now remember that in at least in eukaryotic cells. DNA is found inside of the nucleus. Well, DNA is very, very important. It's like the blueprints for the instructions for uh, blueprints for pro making proteins. So we don't want to, to expose DNA to lots of different things. So we most of the time it's kept inside of the nucleus, protected. It's the mRNA that are the photocopies that are being sent out to the ribosomes to read. So remember that the DNA has a sequence for a gene. Um, and a, and and I guess we'll we'll talk about gene in the future, but what the definition is. But this sequence of DNA is being read, and I don't know if inverted is the right word, but it's it's being copied in a code sequence in mRNA. That's transcription. When this mRNA goes to a ribosome and is read by the ribosome to pull in anticodons for corresponding codons on the mRNA, bringing in amino acids, that's translation. Okay, so it's these two processes. Um, I guess I should just recap real quick. Um, so it's these two processes that make up protein synthesis. So the first is transcription and second is translation. And it's this transcription that goes from DNA, takes a message from DNA and sends it to really mRNA. And in translation, translation the mRNA is being read for putting the amino acid sequence together, um, which really is the, the first part of what we call a protein. Um, and that's, that's protein synthesis. You need to be able to talk about these two processes. Um, but I'm going to actually, I'm going to keep going and talk a little bit about DNA and RNA because you have to be able to, let's see, where am I? You need to be able to compare the two. So compare, let me just remind you that compare for IB is talking about similarities and differences okay both so as I said before the best way to do this is to create a chart um, of DNA and RNA and um, I guess let me do this in a different color Got DNA and RNA. Now, the only thing that IB will ever let you get away with is labeling DNA as DNA and not having to spell it out. I think it's my, you might as well learn what it stands for. Um, and it's deoxyribonucleic acid. So DNA. Whereas RNA stands for ribonucleic acid, RNA. All right, so these are both nucleic acids, which is the fourth category of organic molecules. So you've learned about proteins, you've learned about um, carbs, you've learned about lipids a little bit, and this is the fourth category of nucleic acids, okay? Um, and nucleic acids, we'll, we'll look at um, what this actual structure of DNA in a little bit. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about what makes up that, up this sequence. But what you need to be able to do is tell me um, this list. So I'm going to do them in different colors just so we see that. But the, we have to have similarities and differences. So one of the similarities is that DNA contains a five carbon sugar. RNA also contains a five 
carbon, sugar. Now, you might look at that and say, well, why did Ms. Patel write that twice? This is how you need to show me that there's a similarity between DNA and RNA. If you say that DNA contains a 5-carbon sugar and leave it that way, then you don't get the point. You need to tell me point by point that DNA has this, oh yeah, and RNA does too. Or DNA has this, and RNA has this, which makes it different. Um, for example, one of the differences is that DNA's 5-carbon sugar, so the 5-carbon sugar is deoxyribose. Now, look how convenient that is. If you know that DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, you know it's deoxyribose as the sugar. Whereas RNA is 5-carbon sugar is, guess it, from ribonucleic acid? If you said ribose, you got it. It's ribose. So the 5-carbon sugar for RNA is ribose. Now, fortunately, you already know what ribose looks like. You have to be able to identify that. So you've already committed that to memory, right? Um, so that should be something that's pretty straightforward. Um, you should know that for DNA that each nucleotide or each monomer, that's what we call a monomer um, of a nucleic acid is a nucleotide. Each nucleotide has one of four possible um, nitrogenous bases and that's the same thing for the for RNA. Each nucleotide has one of four nitrogenous bases. And when we think about nitrogenous bases, I want you to think of A's, T's, C's, and G's, or as, as um, RNA's, RNA goes, we're not talking about T's, we're talking about U's. So let's Let's talk a little bit about what we're talking about um, with those A's, T's, C's, and G's. So this would be a um, difference. So the nitrogenous bases are, and you got to spell these out. You can't just say A's, T's, C's, and G's. You got to know that C stands for cytosine, G is guanine, A is adenine, and T for thymine. Whereas in, in RNA, the nitrogenous base are cytosine. guanine or G, adenine, and not thymine, but uracil. Um, and so this is a difference. So you can't, well, just to point out, IB is not going to accept, and I'm not going to accept an answer in which you count most of this as a similarity. If you say the nitrogenous bases for DNA are cytosine, guanine, and adenine, and for RNA they're not cytosine, guanine, and adenine, and then instead say that the difference is that DNA is thymine and RNA is uracil. In case you don't know what, so essentially splitting this up, that doesn't count. This is the difference, and this is the way you need to write it. And the last difference is um, that DNA is double-stranded, whereas RNA is single-stranded. Um, and that's, that's the chart that you need to have memorized to earn full points on um, a question that asks you to compare the two. Um, and I think that that's going to be the end of this process. But let me just point out, um, when, we're getting to, when we're talking about making proteins and all the functions that they have, um, I hope that you realize that it's really, really important that we make good copies of the DNA so that we can make sure that we convert that message into mRNA and then into the proteins everywhere in your body. Each cell has the same DNA 
that you were born with, the single cell that you were conceived, that conceived you, um, the sperm and the egg that came together to make your very first cell had the DNA that makes up every single cell in your body. Um, and that DNA was copied over and over and over again to, um, to give you um, the capability to convert some sections of DNA, some genes, into mRNA, that mRNA, and then that have that mRNA be read by the ribosomes through translation in, to make the proteins that allow you to function. And again, if certain proteins didn't work, then um, you wouldn't be able to survive. Think about some of the proteins I listed. Think about the sodium potassium pump, um, which is a protein that exists in the nerve cells that allow um, action potential to reset or resting potential to reset. Um, the sodium channels, potassium channels in the neurons, those are also proteins. So we've got proteins everywhere and if we didn't have the right set of instructions, we wouldn't survive. Um, and that's what's so important about DNA and RNA. Um, so I hope that makes sense and we'll talk in the next video about the structure of DNA.